Welcome back guys. Steve and I have finally made it back from Corvette Carlisle. We had a great time and I got a ton of great video content for you guys. So I can't wait to share it with you. Alan is busy compiling a bunch of different videos out of the information that we got. We got interviews with some really awesome people. We talked to some really cool manufacturers about new products they have coming out. Can't wait to share all that with you, especially the the overview that we did so you could kind of get a feel of what it was like to be there in the show field. But one of the burning questions that we answer that everybody has asked me to answer for the last three or four years, I'm going to answer for you today straight from the mouth of Paul Kerner, who is the head Corvette tech at GM. And we sat down with him and I, have to, I asked him some tough questions about some of the problems that we hear about on the internet with some of these cars. And the one question we get more than any other is about this one particular thing and we're going to cover that in just a second but first if you would take the time to like subscribe hit the bell do all those wonderful things down there that help us find out and discover what the youtube algorithm wants us to do because the more you do that the more i get to do this and that's what i enjoy doing all right on to today's video the number one question that i have been asked over and over again in the comments of virtually every video I've ever done, is what's the story on the LS7? For those of you who don't know, the LS7 was the C6 Z06 engine that was manufactured from 2006 through 2013. Uh, that engine started out life as the engine, the 5.5 liter V8 used in the C5 and C6R race cars. GM then did a bunch of machine work and a bunch of boring out and changes to get you seven liters of capacity, hence the 427 cubic inches, making 505 horsepower, and it was a beast of an engine. However, if you're looking at buying one of those cars and you go do any kind of internet search, you're gonna see all kinds of chatter on the internet about, oh, the heads go bad, oh, they had huge engine problems, oh, they're the flawed design. Since I've never had one of those cars in my shop with a valve problem or a head problem, I wanted to talk to Paul Kerning and determine whether this was internet fear or if there was a legitimate cause for concern. And he gave me some really, really great information. So, to start out with, the LS7 revs to 7,000 RPMs, which is pretty high. And they wanted it to rev faster than the average Corvette LS2, LS3, whatever. So they added things into this engine that weren't found on any other GM engine. Uh, the exhaust and intake valves are very specific to the LS7. Uh, the intake valves are made of titanium to save weight and because they're very, very hard. The exhaust valves were made of stainless steel and the stems of those valves are sodium filled to help dissipate heat. Very, very trick super sciencey stuff, right? The problem that's being reported on the internet is that the valves go bad or that the engine will swallow a valve or that the engine will burn a hole in a piston because of a flawed design. While some of those things have happened and in 2006, GM did admit openly at that time that there were some problems they had with a certain group of heads that were machined incorrectly that didn't carry over into 2007, eight, all the way up to 13. The verified problem was in 2006, right at the beginning. But there has been this legend of severe failures happening all the time with these cars. In order to understand why some of these failures are happening, I need to talk to you a little bit about how an engine works. An engine is basically a giant air pump, air in, air out. That's what it does. All the other movements and everything are all reliant upon that. In, a, in an engine that is as specifically engineered as the LS7, the tolerances on those engines are very, very tight and the airflow is tightly regulated. So anytime that airflow is interrupted or changed, that engine is no longer running as designed. So when you do things like you add a cold air intake or you add long tube headers or you do a performance chip or you do any of those things, you are changing the internal functions and the airflow of that engine, which stresses things. Um, there are almost zero reported failures 
on an LS7 engine that was stock, almost none, okay? In fact, the failures on stock engines tend to be camshafts, and they're very few and far between, not valve issues. Number two, that, that engine revs to 7,000 RPM, which is way up there for a Chevy V8. But peak torque, where you really start getting the majority of your push, starts at 4,800 RPMs. So revving to seven grand makes no point. If you're shifting at six, you're getting all the torque you need to get build speed, to hit that next corner or to make that next exit or whatever. So you wanna stay away from the red line just a little bit. You know, six or 6,500 is all you'll ever need because you're making all the power you're gonna get down low. It doesn't improve with RPMs like it does with a lot of European engines. The other big problem you get when you start adding aftermarket components that the engine was never designed to work with is that you start leaning out the fuel mixture. More air coming to the engine means a greater portion of air in the air fuel mixture. And while lean is mean, as the racers say, it is also hot. And the problem you can run into there is if you have one piston that is getting hotter than the others, uh, the O2 sensors monitor a bank of pistons. So you have an O2 sensor on this side of the engine and an O2 sensor on this side of the engine. They're each responsible for measuring the total output of four cylinders. They don't measure the output on one cylinder. So you can burn a hole specifically in cylinder number seven. You can burn a hole in the top of that piston by running it lean and you're never going to know it uh, until the engine gives up. And that could be a real problem. Again, goes back to specifically with the LS7, they recommend staying with the stock air intake, with the stock exhaust, all of that, because that's what that engine was made to live with. You know, uh, one of the things Paul said to me, and it makes sense, and if you think about this, all of the aftermarket companies that are making speed add-ons, this makes your car faster, this car gives you 35 more horses, this gives you two seconds, whatever it does, in all of those claims, you never ever hear them say that it makes the car more reliable. Okay, not once, because it doesn't, and they know that. It is, the products that they're selling you are going to give you that result. The problem is the internals of the engine may not survive for a very long time. Another note, if you have, your, if you have a valve guide problem with an LS7, a lot of companies who aren't familiar, you know, you take it to Joe's Speed Shop, Joe's might not be familiar with the LS7. To him, it's just another LS platform V8, and he's going to put brass valve guides in, which is the standard on LS ones, twos, threes, all that stuff. You can't use them on an LS7. Why? Because brass and titanium they don't get along so good. Brass isn't strong enough to deal with constant friction against a titanium surface. That's why the valve guides in the LS7 are very, very specific. So if you ever do need to have your valves replaced or your valve guides replaced in your LS7, you have to make sure to use the original LS7 GM valve guides because they are engineered to deal with the frictions and the problems of the titanium. So keep that in mind. So now that I've had all that knowledge that I've had to carry in my head for almost a week, which was crazy, passed on to you. In sum, what it comes down to is if you're gonna go look for a C6Z06, Here's your basic shopping guide. Number one, find a car that's bone stock. Find a car that has been completely unscrewed with as far as the engine, the drivetrain, air intakes, exhaust. If you can find one that is as it left the factory, your odds of having an actual engine problem are pretty, pretty low. Uh, there's very, very few records of that ever happening. Number two, stay away from the 2006 if you can. There's only a handful of the 2006s that had the defective heads installed that had the, you know, the wrong machining go on with them, but there's no way to know which ones are which. So I'd say if you're planning on keeping this car long term, probably want to look at a 2007 or newer just to be safe. Number three, don't over rev the engine. Over revving the engine over stresses the engine and it doesn't need to happen because you're making power so low in the RPM range anyway you don't need it, you're not getting a benefit out of it, you're just wearing the engine more than you need to. Number three or four, wherever we're at, <laughs> um, maintenance history. Maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. Now you know I've pounded this into your head about every other Corvette that you're thinking about buying. 
But on a C6 Z06, the maintenance history is extremely important because this is a special car with a very special engine and you want to pay a little bit more for a car that can hand you a folder or a chip or whatever that has all the things that have been done to that car in its lifetime because this is an investment you're planning on making for a long period of time and you really want to enjoy the car, make sure you get maintenance records. Be patient and wait for a car that matches these criteria because you're going to end up having a much better long-term ownership experience. So that's it for the LS7, straight from the mouth of the number one engine guy at GM. I hope you found this instructive. If you have comments or questions, put them down below. I'll answer them as I can. And Paul has told me if there are questions that come in that I didn't cover in this or that we didn't talk about, I can fire them off to him and he'll help me answer them within a week or so. So if you guys want to participate in that, go right ahead. I appreciate you watching. And man, I can't wait to share some of the videos I've got from Carlisle with you in the coming weeks. Take care.